New Zealand has had its fair share of technically advanced America's cut boats. In fact, you could argue that going back over the years, innovation has been right at the heart of pretty much all of their campaigns. From KZ7, the plastic fantastic 12 meter, through to NZL32, the boat that won them the cup in 1995, innovation has been at the heart of their success. But it hasn't always worked. KZ1, the giant deed of gift monohull, got thrashed in its competition against Dennis Connor and his 60-foot wing-masted cat. But when you look back over the history of New Zealand's involvement with the America's Cup, I think there's another boat that stands out. NZL20. It was the first of a new class that became the IACC boats, and it was radical, and it very nearly got them to the Cup. Now, you may wonder why I'm telling you all of this whilst I'm standing next to the Planet Sail Southern Hemisphere Company vehicle. Well, the reason is, is that one of our viewers got in touch to say that NZL20 was sitting up at Gulf Harbour, just to the north of Auckland, and that I really ought to take a look. So I did, and it wasn't what I was expecting. Because when I arrived, this is what I found. It's a bit of a sorry sight, isn't it? A boat that meant so much that very nearly took New Zealand to the America's Cup being abandoned in a boatyard like this. But of course the reality is boatyards around the world are full of race yachts that have done their time. But it's such a shame with this one because this was, as I say, a radical boat. One of the key things about it that a lot of people remember was that it didn't have a rudder, at least not a conventional one. It had two keel fins with a lead bulb suspended between them at the bottom. Now that's gone, it's no longer here. So why did it have two keels and no rudder? Well, I think that's quite a complicated question to answer, but in essence, there were a number of key things about it. First of all, the fin at the back, this one here, is actually a rudder. You can see up at the top, it's actually off center right now with that bird's nest in there. <laughs> but this rotates and was bolted to the keel. And the one at the front, I think, looking at it, this one was sort of almost like a giant trim tab. It too could rotate, but only through a small amount up at the top. You can just see a hint of that, that actually I think they could rotate this in the same way that you might uh, have a flap on the trailing edge of a keel that we saw in the later America's Cup boats. One of the other key things about, go, just going back to the rudder here, was that it was a long way forward, or rather it is a long way forward from the back of the boat where you'd normally expect to see the rudder. One of the issues, one of the benefits of that is that it makes the boat really quite nimble. It can actually turn very efficiently and very quickly and very tightly. It does make it more difficult to steer in a straight line, something that the British campaign discovered in 2002 when they arrived down in Auckland with GBR Challenge with their second boat that had a similar arrangement. From what I was told about that, that was a nightmare to steer in a straight line. But this boat worked well. But it never really caught on. But it was a radical boat in several other ways too. First of all, it had loads of flare, the top sides flared right out. It was really beamy and then sort of drew in towards the transom. One of the reasons for this flare was to create writing moment because the America's Cup course then had a reaching leg in it. So they needed to create stability and power to get across that reaching leg. But the other thing that was radical about this boat also proved to be the undoing of the entire America's Cup campaign. And it was a short little thing, the bowsprit. 
Although they used a conventional spinnaker pole, it was an overlength spinnaker pole and they had the bowsprit that they could tack the kite down onto through a jibe whilst they pulled the pole back and then shoved it out the other side. And it meant that it was a very powerful tool going through the jibes because it meant you could keep the power on with the kite all the way through the jibe. Now this was a very successful boat pretty much from the minute it went in the water did extremely well in the Louis Vuitton Challenger series. In fact, it made it right the way through to the final, where it was up against Il Moro de Venezia. They were leading 4-1. They looked like it was in the bag. And then Il Moro de Venezia protested them over that bowsprit and won. And from that point, for reasons that still seem rather strange when we look back on it, the wheels came off the Kiwi campaign. They ended up losing the Challenger series. But even though they lost, it turned out that this boat was a really important moment in future New Zealand campaigns for the America's Cup. Because one of the other things to come out of this campaign was one of the most thorough audits that Grand Prix racing has seen. And that, according to those that were there, formed the foundation for some of their most successful campaigns going forwards. I think she's an absolutely beautiful boat. I think she's one of those boats that you just can't take your eyes off. Lovely shape, just something about her. At the time, she was nicknamed the Skiff on Steroids, and it's easy to see why. So another example of Kiwi ingenuity, innovation, a fast boat, a boat that had proved herself on the water, a boat that was up against an Italian. Wait a minute. But one of the other interesting things about this boat as it stands here now is it's been abandoned. It's looking for a home. Her previous owner apparently has just disappeared along with the lead bulb on the keel. But Mike, who's the marina manager here at Gulf Harbour, tells me that actually they've still got the masts, they've got the sails, they've got the winches, they've got all the kit. It's sitting here ready for a loving restoration. And what a boat to own. A piece of history. A boat that made a big difference. Maybe not so much at the time, but certainly played its part in America's Cup history going forwards. And in fact, it's on Trade Me at the moment. That's sort of the Kiwi version of eBay. Put in your bid. As I say that, I can hear my wife sitting at home watching this going, oh my God, someone, please take him away. Take him away, walk away from the boat. I will. One impulse purchase, a motorbike in New Zealand. That's enough for this trip. Yeah, that's enough for, the, I'm going home. Just one little look wouldn't hurt, would it?